most people that I see uh, are survivors of chronic stress. And so um, maybe I should back up and say that there, there are kind of two complexes of, of trauma symptoms that I see uh, in people. Um, complex PTSD versus more simple uh, post-traumatic stress. So complex PTSD I think of as being um, a developmental condition. It's, it's when you, you grow up in an emotionally unsafe environment and you have to attend to safety issues a lot in your environment as a child. And so um, there are a lot of problems that occur as a result of that. One of them being that um, your sense of self um, has to be determined externally a lot. Um, you, because you're having to over-attend to your environment to preserve your safety, um, you lose track of what your internal environment is saying to you. Like, what do I like to do? Who am I? You know, what am I interested in? What are my desires? What are my inspirations? And so, this um, chronic need to attend to one's environment for the purpose of establishing safety um, causes you to be estranged from yourself, for the fir um, first of all. Second, um, the activity of hypervigilance um, represents a chronic stress on the nervous system. So, uh, people who have to be in hypervigilance a lot as children um, learn that that's what it means to be a human being. That's how it is. That's their baseline. That's the, the water that they swim in. So, what can happen in situations like that is your uh, adrenals that make cortisol and norepinephrine and stress hormones are having to work too hard to do that. And uh, the adrenals are not meant to work that way. They're meant to make high levels of cortisol and norepinephrine in a short period of time to get away from a threat, get away from a predator, and then go back to low levels of you know, relaxation low levels of cortisol and norepinephrine and relaxation. So um, having a chronic load of stress on your adrenals can cause a lot of other problems. Um, we talked before uh, about the study, um, the ACE study, which was a huge survey of tens of thousands of people that associated, um, ACE stands for Adverse Childhood Events. So um, the number of adverse childhood events, which were on questionnaire, um, anything from early parent loss to abuse, um, assault, um, terrible accident, loss of a sibling, loss of a parent, things like that. The more of those events you had, the, more, the higher your risk was of developing things like diabetes, hip fractures, cancer, um, heart disease. So um, the chronic diseases of adulthood that cause so much disability in this country are actually diseases of trauma. Those are, those are late, long-term uh, results of early childhood adverse events. So, so we have to look, I think we have to look at the big picture to um, not just address symptoms of post-traumatic stress, which we need to do, but we also need to look at the underlying physiology and undo those patterns. I wanted to say one more thing about complex PTSD, which is that a lot of the, the folks who end up with uh, personality disorder diagnoses are people who have had early childhood trauma. And you know, the studies with borderline personality in particular show that um, on average, when you look at different studies that screen for childhood abuse, 90% um, is the rate of, of childhood abuse uh, in people who are later diagnosed with borderline personality. So again, a whole category of diagnoses that we have um, can be traced back to trauma in childhood, overwhelming emotional circumstances that uh, are too much for the child's neurology neurological uh, development to handle. Um, so I'd like to say a few things about uh, 
food sensitivities um, and gut inflammation. It's a common phenomenon uh, to uh, and when, when, you see, when I see a person who has trauma in their history or who has a post-traumatic stress condition to have um, other medical, associated medical conditions such as um, terrible environmental allergies, hay fever, uh, sensitivities to environmental toxins, uh, solvents, chemicals. Um, and one of the uh, reasons for that is that um, the adrenals, when they're weak, are not able to produce enough cortisol. Um, having enough cortisol is necessary to meet the common stresses of the day. You know, the uh, driving to work and being cut off in traffic and not freaking out about it. Um, the uh, person in your office who sneezes when they walk by your cubicle and you don't get sick. Cortisol helps you not get sick for that. Um, being able to go to the gym and do an hour of cardio and not feel like you just ran a marathon. You need enough cortisol to be able to do that. So when you go out in the world and you see the you know, amazing popularity of coffee, for example, right? just in the last, what, 20 years? I don't know how long Starbucks has been in business. But I mean, we went from a world where, you know, there was awful coffee in gas stations to a world where even small towns have like a Starbucks now, right? Well, coffee stimulates the release of norepinephrine. That's what it does. So my theory is that coffee is the sort of poor man's approach to dealing with or the less effective approach to dealing with adrenal fatigue. It's, it, it jacks up, it, it, it makes, it, it, it squeezes the adrenals into making more norepinephrine. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is it's not an effective booster of cortisol. So what you get with increased norepinephrine is you get increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, you get sweating, you get diarrhea, you know, these are some of the side effects of coughing, <laughs> right? When you take too much. So, but it does make you feel like you have a little energy for a while, right? So we have an epidemic of chronic stress, which leads to adrenal fatigue, which leads to, you know, massive coffee addiction. And, you know, I've been there. You know, when, when I was in medical school, I had a thermos of coffee and a two liter Mountain Dew that I drink every day. <laughs> two liters? <laughs> Incredible. But it doesn't help with the cortisol. No. No. Because um, it's, you know, caffeine is, it, it, it just doesn't boost cortisol. So, so what you end up with is a kind of a speedy, you know, version of, it's not health, right? You're not getting health from coffee, but you're getting like a, a patch on your tire. So you feel like you're getting down the road, but you still have a problem that hasn't been addressed. Mm -hmm. And you're still just as prone to getting sick from weak adrenals as the next person who's not abusing coffee. But you might, you know, you have the illusion of having more energy and being able to get more done. Hmm. So, uh, so food sensitivities um, are important. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about that is there was a recent there was a recent study in Italy by an Italian research team that found that. 30% of the children in Italy are gluten intolerant, okay? And that's, I think that's an interesting study because pasta is such a big part of that culture, right? So when you think about it, um, that's a lot of people eating gluten every day who are not able to digest it and who, who are having gut inflammation from that. So when you eat something that causes aggravation in your gut and causes inflammation. Um, there is uh, a change in the architecture of the gut wall and um, you can easily, um, by overstimulating the gut with too much uh, that you're not able to digest, you can make 
uh, changes occur in the gut, gut flu through inflammation that make uh, the wall of the gut a little leaky. It makes it allows things to come in uh, from the lumen of the bowel into the body that don't belong in the body. And so um, this is one of the ways that we develop uh, autoimmune conditions. So when something comes into the body that, does, that, that, that ordinarily in good health the gut would reject and just flush out of your system, um, and it comes across into across the that barrier and gets into the bloodstream. Your white blood cells um, that circulate and make antibodies recognize that as an invader, and so they make antibodies to it. Um, so, in some situations, the antibodies that are made that to recognize these things that don't belong in your body then uh, recognize something inside of you and then the antibodies attach to that. So it's a case of mistaken identity when you have autoimmune diseases. So an autoimmune disease is when your own immune system is attacking yourself. What you ideally want to happen, of course, is you want to have a healthy gut. You don't want things to go across into your body that don't belong there because you don't want your immune system sensitized to things that are not there because there's a risk of this mistaken identity problem. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what's the connection between everything you're talking about right now, nutrition, cortisol, um, leaky gut, and mental health? Yeah. How does one affect the other? Good question. So, uh, so when we have a leaky gut, um, things come across that don't belong in there. We've talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing that happens is absorption is not efficient. So you can't get the vitamins and minerals that you need to come in as easily. And you can't get the amino acids in that you need to build uh, neurotransmitters Mm -hmm. as easily. So Mm -hmm. a person who goes to McDonald's, I'm just going to pick up McDonald's because it's already been done. It's not controversial to do that, really. Uh, Every day, and is, let's say, gluten intolerant, and they're eating cheeseburgers every day, maybe they're even dairy intolerant too. Um, you might say, well, that person's not malnourished because they look like they're you know, 15 or 20 pounds overweight. But from a nervous system standpoint, they can be in starvation because they're not getting enough protein in their diet. And they're not able to absorb the minerals and vitamins that are necessary cofactors for building neurotransmitter. So that's why the gut and the, and the nervous system are connected, is that we have a huge need for raw materials in the amino acids and in the cofactors for the enzymes to make neurotransmitter in the vitamins and minerals. We have a big hunger for that every day. And if we're not satisfying that hunger because we just can't absorb the stuff because our diet is full of toxic things for us, we're not going to be able to make the neurotransmitters. And if we can't make the neurotransmitters, we're going to have symptoms. We're going to have anxiety, we have depression, we're going to have lethargy, fatigue, insomnia is a big one, irritability, anger outbursts. So it's a whole cascade that starts with um, having a healthy uh, interface in the gut with our environment so we can get what we need. Does that answer the yeah, question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How specific, how do you treat adrenal fatigue? That's a great question. 